Hello, I'm Joe Barks. Welcome to another edition of The Road Back, brought to you by Club Resort Business, Club Resort Chef, and the Club Resort Chef Association. Today's episode is sponsored by John Deere Golf Course Equipment. John Deere offers a full range of mowers, gator utility vehicles, tractors, sprayers, aeration equipment, and other attachments and products that help you get the control you've always dreamed of for your golf course. John Deere's precision cut and terrain cut mowers featured the exclusive tech control display, allowing you, you to control both the speed and frequency of clip. This year, John Deere rounded out its fairway mower product family with the latest additions to the 6000A series that provides customers with electric real drive technology to ensure maximum productivity and performance. John Deere now offers a complete family of 11 fairway mowers to meet any need. John Deere also unveiled three new triplex mowers this year to now offer a complete range of seven triplex mowers. John Deere has also updated its legendary line of Gator utility vehicles with new automotive-like features that make the vehicles easier to operate and provide improved control in a variety of terrains. And John Deere offers the OnLink management system, a cloud-based decision platform for improving all aspects of golf course management, including labor, equipment, water, chemicals and fertilizers, weather, and playability. For more information on all John Deere golf course equipment products, visit deer.com and click on the golf and sports turf image and then on view golf equipment. A key to getting on the road back has been finding new ways to engage members and to maximize how they can make full use of what their club properties have to offer, even with the restrictions that have been imposed by the pandemic. For today's fresh insight into how to meet the challenges posed by the coronavirus outbreak, and to find new and innovative ways to boost business levels and return to full operation. We're going to go up to upstate New York to hear about the unique Tin Man competition that was held for the first time this October at the Country Club of Buffalo. With us today are the club's general manager, chief operating officer, Nick Markle, and Kevin Clark, who chairs the club's shooting committee. Thank you both for giving us a couple minutes today. Nick, uh, maybe you could start by just giving us a quick summary of what the Tin Man involved, both for the actual competition and other uh, events that you arranged around it. Sure, Joe, thank you for having us. Um, so the Tin Man is a unique idea that Mr. Clark has been working on for, for a few years, and I'm, I know he'll tell you a little bit more about its inception, but uh, it was a full day event that took advantage of all of our, uh, almost all of our uh, low risk outdoor activities, which were in high demand during the pandemic and still are. Um, the participants started out with a morning of uh, paddle tennis and uh, sporting clays and then moved on to a, uh, a quick lunch and then a two-man scramble on the golf course. Uh, so the entire competition was, uh, was a two-man competition, the paddle, the shooting, and the golf. Uh, all day took about eight hours, uh, and it was a, we, we lucked out. We had a nice, uh, beautiful late fall day for it, and uh, it really was a popular event. Well, how'd this all come about? What the, how did the idea come about, and what kind of planning was involved for both the staff and the membership? As the traditional golf season winds down, our shooting season starts up. Uh, and we have by far the ro ro most robust shooting facility in North America for a country club. We have five separate fields. Uh, no one compares to our facility, 24 dedicated acres. But traditionally, a lot of the golfers, especially the men, you know, some don't even, didn't even know it existed. So trying to get those folks to, to get down there and take quote, an opportunity to shoot was part of the strategy. Same thing for paddle. As golf disappeared, you had some people, a, a core group. But I felt that if we could put together a very, very unique, one of a uh, kind uh, event, we'd get that support. <clears throat> Nick came in as the new general manager, jumped on it, took it to the board. The board gave us the traction to get going. And as soon as they did that, uh, it took a life of its own. So how did it work out? How many people did you have participate and uh, how did it go? Was there anything you were surprised by how it went, good or bad? Well, we had uh, 28 members. It was a member only event this year. Uh, I think uh, the, the complexity of the scheduling, because you had seven different competitions, people moving around, changing clothes, changing equipment. We had a tremendous amount of club volunteers that made it work. And, and as Nick said, the weather was just in our favor. I think the surprise was uh, in the complexity of the uh, the way we uh, constructed the point scheduling, the ability to gain points, we wanted to make sure that we got all the teams at the end of the competition into the two-man scramble, that most of them had an, an opportunity to win. So 
We had members strategically going around trying to find somebody that have the strength that they didn't have. So we had a broadening of our membership looking for people that they didn't traditionally play golf with or socialize with. So that was a huge, huge benefit. The other thing we had is we had comp competitors in their mid 20s to a competitor almost 70. So we had a real broad um, bandwidth of participation by our members. So uh, now you've had one under your belt, how do you plan to build on the success of this going forward? Uh, anything you're gonna change or add to how you plan it, how you promote it, how you execute it? Well, I'll give you one piece and I'll turn it back to Nick. At the, at the presentation dinner where we gave out the trophies, every team demanded that they have the first right of refusal for next year's event because we know we're going to be limited. We won't be, it, we, you know, because of the complexity of it, we'll probably be limited to 32 teams. So we already have people strategizing to find that best shooter or best tattle uh, player. And we have a lot of people that have already come out that never shot before on our clay fields and paddle fields. So I'll turn it back to Nick, but I, I believe we won't have any, any trouble uh, selling it out next year. As with any brand new event, there's always uh, some logistical things that you may not think through in the initial planning as hard as you try. Um, so there, there will be some things that we will probably try to coordinate a bit better uh, next time. Uh, you know, it was really was an interesting challenge, even though uh, only 28 members participated, which was a great field for the first go round. And we're looking forward to having more the next time. Um, we really used uh, almost all of our amenities uh, you know, and when you throw food and beverage in, a, a breakfast, a lunch, and a, a nice steak dinner uh, after the event, uh, you know, it, it was a it was a lot of coordination between departments, uh, which uh, you know can be a, a challenge from time to time. I think the, the team handled it really well, and uh, certainly some lessons learned. And we're looking forward to doing it again next year and doing it even bigger and better. Uh, as Kevin alluded, uh, one of his goals or strategies was to draw more attention and participation in all the full range of activities you have there at the club. Uh, are you seeing some evidence of that with golfers now getting more into shooting and shooters getting more into paddle and so forth? We, we, uh, I, I'm, a, I'm the poster boy for that. I, I've been a member here for 20 years. Like I said, I'm the chairman of the shooting committee. I knew where the paddle tennis courts were. I didn't know how to get in on them. I am now in my third week of competition in a league with about 10 or 15, uh, 12 other new new members who just because the Tin Man went in there and said, this is a great sport. So, yes, and we're seeing a tremendous amount of guys coming down uh, and shooting with us because our shooting fa uh, facilities are now open every Saturday. And the great news is we have a junior program. They're bringing their kids. We have a couples program. So, yes. I think we're seeing great traction with the with what the Tin Man's done for us. And beyond being able to offer this as another <clears throat> new and fun event for your members, has there also been a strategy to use this as a way to gain exposure for the club and attract new member interest? Absolutely, Joe. I, I tell you, um, we already offer a shooting membership uh, that we have seen uh, folks uh, convert over to full membership in the past. And, uh, you know, we, we do expect to, to gain some interest there. Uh, but also I would tell you, uh, this is an event that um, has has bolstered the interest in shooting and sporting clays to, to the point where uh, we are now considering, Mr. Clark and I are looking into a um, in, in an invitational uh, tournament. As uh, Mr. Clark mentioned earlier, uh, we believe they have the most robust shooting or sporting clays program in, in North America, at least at a private club. And uh, we'd like to start inviting other clubs with shooting programs in on an annual basis for uh, you know a, a traditional shooting event um, that we think could be a lot of fun. Was it also helpful in just kind of energizing people during a, a rough year, just to have something new and uh, interesting to do, both members and staff? Absolutely, I, I'll tell you, and I think most club managers would echo this, uh, you know, member activities have been through the roof, uh, you know, dining, uh, golf, uh, paddle tennis, pool, out, you know, as I mentioned earlier, low risk outdoor activities uh, have been in high demand this year. Uh, but still, it was great to have something, as Mr. Clark mentioned earlier, we we're past our traditional golf season. Uh, so it was nice to have something to get people to come out and enjoy a nice fall day uh, here at the club. And, uh, and as we were talking about, you know, I, I certainly expect to see 
continued interest in some of our winter activities. Uh, you know, Buffalo, New York is uh, often joked about as having a, a traditionally rough winter, uh, but we do have some great winter amenities like paddle and like sporting clays, and we do put an ice rink out on our uh, first tee area. So uh, we're looking forward to uh, potentially some more, uh, some increased winter activity, uh, particularly if people can uh, not travel if the restrictions continue the way they are now. I'd just like to add one point there as a member. Uh, the staff embraced this from the ground crew, the superintendent. The, like uh, Nick said, we had breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and we were, and stuff was being moved every direction in this club uh, over the 300-plus acres. Uh, it was amazing. The, the, the staff just loved to see this crazy tournament that they're not sure that with a bunch of old guys like me and a bunch of young guys participating, it was genuinely just amazing the support we got from the golf committee, from Jay Sullivan, who's the pro, and his entire team who did all the scoring and the complex scoring and had it all ready. And uh, so I, I can't compliment uh, Nick and his staff more um, for what the job they did for us and the members. That's great. I want to thank you both for filling us in on what uh, really went into a lot went into creating a really unique event, and uh, we'll look forward to hearing about more things that you're doing to continue to engage your members and bring new energy and distinction to the Country Club of Buffalo. Super. Thanks for your time. We really appreciate it. Once again, this has been The Road Back, brought to you by Club and Resort Business, Club and Resort Chef, and the Club and Resort Chef Association. And today's episode was sponsored by John Deere Golf Course Equipment. If you have a great idea or success story you'd like to see featured on a future episode of The Road Back, please contact us at editor at clubandresortbusiness.com.